Dallas is a city known for many things, but the events that occurred here in November 1963 still resonate with Americans and the world even today. Dealey Plaza is a city park on the west end of downtown Dallas, where three streets converge and pass under a triple underpass railroad bridge. It was really just another city park until the day President John F. Kennedy came into town on a political trip just before Thanksgiving 1963. Located in Dealey Plaza is the old Texas School Book Depository. The sixth floor of this building has become synonymous with the Kennedy assassination, since this is where the Warren Commission said Lee Harvey Oswald fired three shots at President Kennedy, striking him and then Governor Connolly with a single bullet, missing another shot, and then killing Kennedy with a shot to the head. However, there are many today that feel Oswald either didn't do it or didn't do it alone. To emphasize this point, some visitors have highlighted the word allegedly in the sentence that states that Kennedy was assassinated by Oswald on the building's Texas historical marker. As has been reported many times in the past, President Kennedy was in Dallas as part of a Texas trip to bring the Democratic Party together before a presidential run in 1964. This included a motorcade throughout the city, with the president riding in an open-top limousine. On November 22, 1963, Kennedy came down Main Street and turned onto Houston. At that time, turning north onto Houston Street was allowed. Today, you can only go south. The motorcade proceeded northward on Houston and then made a sharp turn onto Elm Street in front of the Texas School Book Depository. Elm Street curves and gently slopes down toward a triple underpass. Also located on the right is a so-called grassy knoll and a wooden picket fence. It was here on a concrete pedestal that a local women's clothing store manufacturer named Abraham Sabruder shot one of the most famous 26 seconds of film in history. Orville Nix took what many call the second best film of the assassination. Mary Mormon took her famous Polaroid photograph near this spot at the exact moment Kennedy was hit in the head. A firestorm of controversy has surrounded the Kennedy assassination since it happened 50 years ago. Many simply refuse to accept the Warren Commission's conclusion that Oswald assassinated Kennedy all alone. Much of the attention has been focused on the picket fence located on the grassy knoll in the plaza. Many witnesses claim they heard the shots coming from this area. Without a doubt, it would have given a sniper a perfect view of Kennedy as he came down Elm Street that day. Today, people come to the fence to leave their thoughts written with felt-tip pens. Some notes are condolences for JFK. Others credit dark forces for the deed. Some of the witness testimony leads people to believe in a conspiracy. One witness, Lee Bowers, was operating the Union Terminal Company's two-story interlocking tower at the time of the assassination. He could see the rear of the concrete pergola as well as a stockade fence. 
He said he heard three shots and that they either came from the school book depository or near the mouth of the triple underpass railroad bridge. He claims to have seen two men standing between the pergola and the fence at the time of the assassination and a flash of light or smoke coming from that area at the time Kennedy was shot. Bowers died in 1966 in a single car accident near Mytholonian, Texas. Some point to the physical evidence as proof of a conspiracy. Bullet CE-399 supposedly went into Kennedy's back and neck, entered Governor Connolly's chest, breaking the rib, and went into his wrist and then was embedded in his thigh. Here you can see Kennedy right before the first shot rang out. This bullet transversed 15 layers of clothing, 7 layers of skin, and approximately 15 inches of tissue, struck a necktie knot, removed 4 inches of rib, and shattered a radius bone. Many believe that the second shot hit a curb near the triple underpass where James Tague was standing. It caused a concrete chip to fly up and injure him on the right cheek. Other spots in Dealey Plaza show evidence of concrete removal due to possible additional bullet markings. Deputy Sheriff Buddy Walthers stands above a blonde haired man who was supposedly with the FBI and removing a possible fourth bullet found near where Kennedy was shot. However, neither he nor the bullet has ever been seen since that day. There is hardly any denying where the third shot went. After Kennedy was hit, the mad dash to Parkland Memorial Hospital began. Then Police Chief Jesse Curry led the now high-speed motorcade to the hospital, which was about four miles away from Dealey Plaza. They passed what was to be President Kennedy's original destination, the trademark, which still had signs greeting him. This is the trademark entrance today. He was supposed to address the Dallas Citizens Council with members of the Dallas Assembly and to salute the Graduate Research Center of the Southwest. Upon arriving at Parkland, Kennedy and Connolly were rushed into the operating rooms. Doctors, including a young Dr. Red Duke, worked feverishly on both men. Outside, the world waited on word on whether President Kennedy and Governor Connolly had come through. While most people think that this is the entrance to the emergency room where they brought in Kennedy that day, it is actually behind these structures attached to the old building. While Connolly would survive his wounds, Kennedy was pronounced dead at 1 p.m. that Friday afternoon. 35th President of the United States was only 46 years old. Fifty years after his death, President John F. Kennedy is still remembered. Whether it was a conspiracy or not, his passing saddened a generation of people that believed in his dreams as well as his bold visions. Although many go to Dealey Plaza when examining the Kennedy assassination, there are many places in Dallas connected to Lee Harvey Oswald, Kennedy's alleged assassin. This includes his alleged movements after Kennedy was hit. Officer Marion Baker and Oswald's supervisor, Mr. Truly, ran into him on the depository's second floor lunchroom having a Coke 90 seconds after the shooting. Baker said he was not nervous, nor was he out of breath. Truly said Oswald was startled when the officer drew his gun on him. However, Oswald was ID'd as an employee and then was let go. Shortly afterward, Oswald left the building and apparently walked seven blocks to board a bus at Murphy Street at about 12.40 p.m. Oswald then exited the bus near Lamar Street four minutes later after requesting a transfer. He walked a few blocks 
and then got into a cab, cab number 36, at this spot, which was driven by William Whaley. He almost gave up the cab to a woman that came up and asked the driver to call her a cab. However, neither the Warren Commission nor anyone else has ever been able to find this woman. The cab drove Oswald to Oak Cliff, where he lived in a rooming house, away from his wife Marina and his two children. The rooming house is located at 1026 North Beckley. He told the cab to drive up a few houses past the rooming house, pay the driver, then walk back to it. While inside, he silently walked past the rooming house housekeeper, Erlene Roberts, went into his room, grabbed the jacket, and left. It is also here that they say Oswald got his gun. At approximately 1.11 to 1.14 p.m., Officer J.D. Tippett was driving east on East 10th Avenue when he pulled alongside a man that was believed to be Oswald. Witnesses say the man walked over to the police car, talked to Officer Tippett through an open window vent, and then Tippett got out of his car and walked in front of him. At this point, the man drew his gun and shot Tippett three times in the chest. Then the man shot Tippett once more in the right temple, which was the fatal shot. Officer Tippett died here at the scene. Oswald then made his way down Jefferson Street. At this gas station, witnesses say Oswald ditched his jacket. He kept walking briskly down Jefferson, but did not run. He went past all of his shops. In 1963, this shop was a shoe store managed by Johnny Brewer. He was listening to a transistor radio and heard about the Kennedy and Tippett killings when a man walked into the foyer of the store. He seemed to be hiding from police, which whizzed by the store with sirens blazing. Then the man walked about 90 steps down to the Texas Theater and walked in without buying a ticket. Brewer helped identify the man inside the theater, and the man tried to pull a gun and punched a police officer. He was subdued in the struggle. The man turned out to be Lee Harvey Oswald. Today, the movie theater still shows movies. The ticket booth and doors Oswald used to enter are still there, although the ticket booth has been moved back somewhat. After Oswald's arrest at the theater, he was taken to Dallas Police Headquarters, where he was kept for a couple of days. While the country prepared to bury the young president, Oswald was interrogated, even held in front of reporters for a midnight press conference. Also at these press conferences was Jack Ruby, a nightclub owner in Dallas with alleged police and mafia connections. On Sunday, November 24th, Oswald was to be taken from headquarters to the nearby county jail from this ramp area. Jack Ruby went into this store to send an emergency money order and, leaving two dogs in his car, went down the main street ramp to the police headquarters where the authorities were just about to escort Oswald into an armored car that would take him to the county jail. Just as they were bringing Oswald out, Ruby stepped out from about where this red divider is and fatally shot Oswald with his 38 revolver. Oswald was pronounced dead at 1.07 p.m. at the same hospital where Kennedy was taken just two days before. Some think that Ruby killed Oswald just to silence him. He used to run a seedy nightclub in the area called the Carousel Club, located in downtown Dallas. However, nothing remains today except for a cement wall and some plants. Ruby spent time at the old red courthouse before it became a museum, and then at the county jail, which ironically overlooks Steely Plaza. Jack Ruby died in 1967 of cancer. Also while touring Oswald related locations in Dallas, consider going to Elspeth and Davis where the apartment complex once stood. Oswald and his wife Marina lived here for eight months just prior to the assassination. Unfortunately, the building was demolished in 2013. The famous backyard photos were taken at another one of Oswald and Marina's residences on 214 West Neely Street. The 
place has hardly changed since 1963. There are rumors the place may suffer the same fate as their apartment complex in Elizabeth and Davis, so see it while you can. Some other related objects include a model of the Texas School Book Depository as it appeared in 1963. This can be seen on the seventh floor of the sixth floor museum, along with the original sign. In the years since the Kennedy assassination, Dallas has grown to become one of the country's most adored cities. People from all over the world visit here every day, including many artists that express their creativity in the city's historic West End. Kennedy assassination will always remain a part of its history, just as John F. Kennedy will always be a part of our history.